Welcome, everyone. This is the 3rd of March, 2023. Uh, it's documentation office hours. Agenda topics for today include action items, LTS 2.387.1, documentation transition to Java 17, improving end-of-life notifications, preparing for CentOS 7 end-of-life, uh, we should probably put, even before any of those, introductions. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's do introductions. Are there any other topics you want to put on the agenda for today? Uh, I was just thinking of whether we could you know, also review the PRs uh, that you mentioned. Uh, this is just once, I guess. And we can spend around five minutes on that. Uh, review, you mean these PR pull requests? Okay, all right. You already have. No, wait. I'm, I'm not sure if these, these are the same ones. Uh, I was talking about the ones which uh, revolve around the CLI. Again, the plugins. Oh, oh, okay. Plugin installation manager tool pull request. Right. I think it Good. is a five twenty two. Yeah, it's the five. Oh, sorry, it is a five twenty five to zero. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. So I'm, Freyam, given that that's not specifically a documentation topic, I did. I I'm going to put that one a little minutes. later and let's, well, let's see if we can get to it. Perfect. Any other topics we should consider for the agenda? Meg, any hot topics for you? Okay, then let's go ahead. So, Fram, could you introduce yourself so that so that Meg knows who you are and what your background is, et cetera? Yeah, um, yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Fram, and I'm actually a currently a CS student in India. Uh, I have been, I mean, I have joined Jenkins in the last uh, four months or so, and I have just been looking around. And then finally, currently, uh, I'm a mentor for one of the projects which are coming up in the Google Summer of Code. And I'm here to just learn more about the, I mean, like how the, how, how Jenkins works, because I feel that documentation is a very core sign of how any, uh, how any org operates. So yeah, I'm just here to learn and let's like have some fun. Great. Thank you. Meg, you want to introduce yourself? Okay. So Meg's muted. She may not be so. I'll try to provide an introduction for Meg myself, Graham. Oh, good, Meg, go ahead. Be muted, unmuted. Um, sorry about that. Um, I'm uh, I'm a technical writer. I've been with the Jenkins Project, I think, for five and a half years now. Uh, the last year or so, I've been working less on Jenkins and more on some observability um, open source tools like Captain and Open feature and open telemetry and all of these but i still love jenkins and i love mark so i check in this keeps my fingers in the pot here super thank you meg <laughs> and meg is freya meg is delightful i love working with and learning from meg she is the extraordinary technical writer I come oh, wow. from a software development background. Meg's actually a writer and a writer who has who has worked at places like AT and T Bell Labs writing. So so she's she's got deep, wonderful experience and is is a tremendous asset for what we do in the Jenkins project. So thank you, That's Meg. Really impressive. Yeah. Now do I get to tell you what I think about Mark? No, you don't. <laughs> thank you very much for checking. I said, please good. go on. Please go on. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you later. He's fabulous. You've already figured that out, though, haven't you, Graham? I have. I have. It's very obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. So, how about I'll I'll play the same game. I am a I am a Jenkins contributor. Uh, so I'm a core maintainer. I maintain the Git plugin. Uh, documentation contributor. Uh, I spent several years as the documentation officer, uh, which is kind of strange because my background is actually uh, mechanical. I have a degree in mechanical engineering, and I left the university with that degree and told the recruiter that I didn't want to do mechanical engineering. I wanted to play with computers. And I've played with computers since I left university, and I still play with computers. So a lot of fun. But Mark is a delightful software person who really does understand documentation. So you can have 
Mark, that's why Mark and I've had a lot of fun together because we can really sit down and talk about how you're going to do so. So often the engineers are like, the software works, right? Whatever you want to about it. I don't care. And, uh, <laughs> and vice versa. So Mark and I have had a lot. Have, we've had good times. We really have. And and that that has been a lot of fun. So Meg and I have enjoyed enjoyed a bunch of things. And Anything? I've learned a lot about how to run an open source project working with Mark too. And I am trying to emulate my inner Mark and only about 10 times a day do I say, you got a long ways to go, lady, to make this. <laughs> All right. Great. Anything else on introductions? Um, from what are you actually working on right now? Are you working on the the plugin installer or a oh, plugin installation manager? Read them. Okay. Yeah. So so Fram wants to be a now Fram, did you had you previously been a Google Summer of Code participant? Yes, uh, uh, okay. So I have actually been a contributor in 2021 and I was a mentor at Joomla uh, in 2022. Yeah, so uh, at 2021, I was a contributor at Dadask. And uh, in 2022, I was a mentor at Joomla. Mm. Yeah. So even I have had my fair share of documentation and mentoring uh, students to actually start documenting. Because uh, I feel that like documenting is one of, like, one of those skills where, which aren't exactly taught in their university courses, you know? Like the actually, I mean, the actual importance of this in, in, in any kind of a project. So it's kind of great. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else on introductions? Okay, then let's quick review of action items. I've got two open action items. 2.387.1 releases next Wednesday and the change log and upgrade guide needs to be merged. And then we've got some longstanding pull requests. Uh, Vandit Singh created uh, a really an amazing pull request for the a, an upgrade guide for Jenkins, and it needs needs further refinement and merge. And then unsolling a plugin. This is actually in the Docker repository, but then it needs needs extension and copy into www.jenkins.io. The reason this one is so interesting in Docker is because of the complexities involved in, un in removing a plugin from a Docker container. Mm -hmm. All right, so news items, 2.387.1 releases next Wednesday. Uh, and so we've got, we've got, just got to get it done. Next topic is more for your info. So Meg, for you, we're going to transition the documentation from Java 11 to Java 17. I had heard this. In Yeah, so this is, this is in when Debian 12 releases. That'll be our, our excuse and we'll make that transition across everything. Okay. And the Tim's been informed. Now in the next piece, this is a new piece. So one of the things that we've realized is we've got a number of things that are reaching end of life and we need to communicate that end of life to users. For example, uh, Ubuntu 18 reaches end of life in April, 2023. So coming soon. Uh, but uh, Ubuntu 18, I need to put the number there. But no way to tell users that it is end of life. Uh, we also have some Docker contain some container images that we want to end of life to stop supporting, right? And but no way to communicate that to users. You mean ahead of time? Uh, well. Even during, so yeah, so what we would like, for instance, with Java 11, we announced the end of life and caused them to see a pop-up and they closed the pop-up. Okay, we at least warned them. Then when we actually hit the end of life, we caused another pop-up saying, hey, you're beyond end of life here. And so, magically having their software stop working one day isn't considered a notification? 
No, because it doesn't stop working and oh. we, we, and we wouldn't want it to stop working. It's yeah. more that this is informing them. They need to get to the newer, the newer environment, to the newer version. It's basically. Right. And so in a conversation in the platform SIG, the idea came out, hey, let's generalize this thing so that we could have a data file in a directory in the Jenkins home directory or a, a series of data files, a directory of data files, which are these end of life announcement things. And if that file exists, we will show you that end of life announcement. Nice. The, the thought was, hey, if we do this, we have a way to tell people this container is, is going away. We're not maintaining it further. Or this other thing is disappearing. So now what, what we really need, though, is I've got to create a Jenkins enhancement proposal, a JEP, uh, needed to launch the idea and and then we will then we'll apply it to it to the things like the blue ocean container image uh -huh. that we need to kill off. And I hope we will apply it to CentOS 7 container image. And uh, probably the Arch Linux agent container image. And more, right? So we want. We want those kind of this this thing we want as a way of notifying users you're using something that we have stopped supporting. Ah, uh, um, don't you want some Ubuntu's on there? Well, we don't actually today ship any Ubuntu based container images, so it's no harm. Okay. That one, this 1804 one, is going to be more complicated because we don't control the file system where they write it. When we're doing a Docker container, when we're doing a container, we control the file system. Oh, so so it's there's more. That's why there's more to be done on this concept, right? right. We don't have fully understand it yet. Could we add an item for figuring out how to so that Ubuntu is on our list here? Yeah, right, right. Oh. So consider how we would do that notification. And it could be, it could be, for instance, could be bundling a data file, data file of operating system end of life dates, because there's actually a site that an open source site of all things, end of life dot date that provides these kinds of dates and they have a, a an api that we can use to read their dates so we can see that alpine linux 3.14 will be end of life in two months so if we detect you're running alpine 3.14 conceptually we could use this data and say hey you're on a on a on a container image that we will no longer support Very cool. Yeah. So, and the the folks at this website were very helpful when I up to ask them to update their uh, their data on Jenkins. So uh -huh. they had added Jenkins. We detected that they'd added it, and a few days later, they allowed us to make the merge to to make it look like this. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it says, "Hey, weekly. Yep. Here's the current weekly." Current LTS is supported. Preceding LTSs ended three months ago, ended six months ago. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And that was, that's, that really, there's nothing, I think, from a documentation side for us to do. This is a proposal that needs to be created and then then it'll be discussed in the Jenkins enhancement proposal, then implemented in Jenkins core. Cool. Last one. And then we'll get to, to what, what Fram had proposed. I've got a personal bias against <laughs> antiquated CentOS 7. 
my personal bias is because it ships an ancient command line Git and an ancient version of SSH. And those two things both complicate a plugin that I maintain. It's even worse because CentOS 7 has been in maintenance mode. Maintenance mode since 2020. Uh, end of life, June of 2024, but already not supported by the Jenkins installer. Already not supported, not maintained in its container image. So with that many things going against it, the proposal is let's not wait till June of 2024. Let's declare end of life sooner so we can stop bothering with this thing. All right. So any questions there on that? So this one, it'll need to be done with a Jenkins enhancement proposal. to accelerate it. If we just let things flow naturally, it will end its, end its support in the Jenkins project in June of 2024. I want it sooner than that because I want to stop worrying about it. I thought CentOS was always a stupid thing, so no fighting. <laughs> right. Okay. That covered all those, Fram. I see that you added a topic, a 10 minute right, right. Int uh, intro to Jay. In into to so, what's your topic there? Go ahead. Right. Uh, if I may share my screen right now. So then yes, I can hang on. That. Here we do. Stop I sharing. I don't have access to it. I mean, I've been, I'm, oh, yeah, okay, I can do it now. Perfect. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, what I was trying to show you, wait, I'll show you one second. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'll, let me just hide this annoying thing. Right. Perfect. Okay, all right. Good. Okay. Um, okay. So this is something I worked on uh, when I was a GSOC student at task. So um, the simple idea is that uh, you kind of have the simple doc where you kind of just give an overview of all the commands or at least all the code commands of any software. And then it, it's, it's simply called 10 minutes to dusk or 10 minutes into dusk. Now, Dask is a software which kind of visualizes your containers or visualizes collections in Python. So in this case, we have a simple uh, like code. For example, you just import the Dask uh, libraries, and so finally you create some objects and then so on. But like uh, the the idea is that uh, this thing gives a very simple overview of how to actually get started and or how to get your hands dirty inside the library from the first time, I mean, like from the very first time to use it. So I mean, uh, okay. So like, uh, do we like have something at Jenkins as well? Like, for example, I think this is the page that like we're greeted with uh, when we started using Jenkins. So I was thinking, we, uh, we do. So so click get, uh, over on the left hand side under okay. tutorials. Uh, okay, a guided guided tour will take right. you through a tour of introducing you to Jenkins and oh, how to create a okay. pipeline. Uh, to then use that pipeline to do something, et cetera, with videos associated. So you oh, keep perfect. going. Okay, perfect. Good. Now, if that tour is not enough, then if you go back to the tutorials on the left, click the yeah. Jenkins pipeline tutorial. So that one will give you more, more tutorials. And oh, now wow. here's a page filled with tutorials of various types. So um, a guided tour. That was the easy one. If you've got, hey, I want to do something in more involved, the pipeline tutorials tab section there gives you much more involved things. Um, or if you scroll down to the using build tools, maybe you say, hey, I'm a Python user. Show me how to do something with Python. Well, there's the build a Python app. No, I'm a Node.js user or a React developer. Okay, here's one for React. Now, I do Java. So each of those is available. Understood. Okay, then, I mean, yeah. I just wanted to float a new idea if it wasn't already done. Good, thank you. Yeah, okay. thanks very much.
Yeah, okay. Then this is no, no longer new. It's just like a thing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah, this is a comment. Cool. I mean, yeah, uh, that's kind of it. Okay, great. Thank you. So next topic then, let's take on our... So here we go. See the tutorials on www.jenkins.io. Now we also, I guess there, there is another, another part to this, Fram, which may be, may be more of interest for you in Google Summer of Code. See the developer tutorials. All right, on the contributing Jenkins. guides. Well, and it's even more than contributing guides. There is a an improve a plugin oh, tutorial okay. that allows a new contributor to start. Oh, I with... remember that. Right. Right. Good. Okay. Super. Starts a new developer with, and these are real with real small with small but valuable contributions. So we intentionally made them so that they will benefit the plugin that's that is being that is receiving the pull request. Got it. All right. So Meg, are you okay if Fram and I use this now as a chance to review some plugin installation manager tool sure. pull requests? I lurk along and see what you're up to just for the luck of it. All right, great. So here we go, plugin installation manager. Okay, so the one that was most recently reviewed is this show security warnings by default. And let's make the text big enough to reach, Fram. Okay, so. So the submitter submitted changes in, the, well, first let's look at the goal, right? The goal was implement this enhancement request. Security warnings should be shown by default. And the way that Daniel proposes to do that is make the existing view security warnings command line argument a no-op so that if someone right. gives it, we, we see it and ignore it and add a new option, hide security warnings that says, oh, I don't want to show them. So that by default, the user will always see security warnings. Now there's a, an additional subtlety here that we need to check, which is that these warnings must not go to standard out. They must go to standard error. Edo, right. Right, exactly. So because standard out, one of the things that the contributing guide for the plugin tells us is standard out is reserved for output that should go into the plugins text or the plugins YAML file. So it's reserved for definitional output, not for informational or message-based output. So that's, that's the idea. And now let's go look at the code. All right, so first things first. So this is the readme documenting it. And so if we look at that readme, we should see uh, view security warnings is no longer there. Whoops, is it? I think it's there somewhere. Oh, it's there. Oh, interesting. Okay. But why would we want to? So maybe we need, so this may already hint something that we need, which is, we probably need to say this is the default. All right, yeah. Right, because hide security warnings is no longer the default. Okay, so let's make a note there. Um, now there isn't a way to do it here, so. Okay. We, 
we should update the it was view security warnings description to note that it is that it is the default value Um, just one second. Uh, actually, uh, the line number fifty-four is the one in question, right? Because he had when he has that, so view all security one. Oh, you're right. No, wait a sec. So, am I just reading it wrong? Oh, oh. Thank you, Fram. You're right. I read it incorrectly. Yeah. Cancel. Very good. Thank you. There's power in two of us doing this. This is view all security warnings. Exactly, and that's not by default, I think. Right. You're correct. Absolutely. Thank you. Very good. Okay. And so that is this line here. Good. All right. So we're fine. Okay. Next then. So in the command line options, comment here that tells us view security warnings is deprecated, but not removed. So that's good. And the variable is that stores the value is deprecated. And then hide security warnings has now been added. Right, if any security warnings exist, good. And it is a Boolean. Okay, so I think this is this is set. And now with hide warnings, okay, so this is all right. So I, I'm a little perplexed here. Why is there still a with show warnings? Shouldn't this one be, shouldn't this line be removed? It seems like. Because in the, well, let, it's let's. It's no longer being called, right? Well, let, okay, let's, again, let's take a look at the file. Let's see what it tells us, bigger picture. Okay, so with hide, okay. So this says creates a configuration class with configuration specified. Ah, okay. So it is intentionally initializing everything, right? Even deprecated things are being initialized here. So I think this should remain. Let's double check that. Are there any other deprecated options? Okay, view security warnings. That's nope. the only one. Okay, so this is the first time we're, we're doing a depre deprecating an option. So it's saying it's going to use is show warnings and is show warnings if we search for is show warnings. We should see. Okay, interesting that this this method that accesses it is, it is not listed as deprecated and yet seems like it probably should be shouldn't it Could you just uh, scroll up a bit uh, we just have a look at these surrounding ones if they have anything specific yeah i don't see anything i think it should be deprecated because it's accessing a deprecated a deprecated Vinable. Boolean, it seems like right. this should also be deprecated. But exactly. Then, okay, so let's make a note there. All right, so is hide warnings, is hide warning. Okay, so. Shouldn't be is. Hide is is show warnings method be deprecated since it is accessing a deprecated uh, deprecated field, right? 
and I'm not I'm not 100 sure, but I think it's worth at least us asking the question. Then before we conclude this review, we'll decide if we want to say, please make it so. All right. All right. So this is a test on is hide warnings. Okay, here is the test that says if we pass in the argument hide security warnings, it comes back true. That makes yeah, sense. Sounds simple. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Then we add a new Boolean hide warnings, initialize it in the constructor, set the value there, a getter, the builder also. Okay, so. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, oh, good, right. And so this doesn't have to alter anything. So we should be able to see this run ourselves then. So I should be able to go download this thing and run it on my local computer. Okay. So let's look in the checks. Here are the checks. And if we go to ci.jenkins.io and if we download one of these files. So what we need is the plugin management CLI jar file. So this one. So I'm going to copy that. And now we're going to borrow a small computer. Okay. And this is what pull requires PR522. Now what we need is we need a plugin that has a security warning. So let's go choose one. Plugins, security, whoops. How about, oh, that doesn't help me. That's the word security. I want something that has a known security issue. Let's try. Well, this is why we have documentation, isn't it, Meg? We will now look at the list of security vulnerabilities and find one that is not resolved. Okay, so for instance, in the most recent advisory, were there any that had unresolved Nope. So we have to go back one more advisory. This one has plugins that did not have a fix, including. All right. So this one, Barry Chat plugin. Let's go confirm that. Oh, whoops. How about Cisco Spark Notifier? There we go. Okay. There's the, the thing that tells us exactly. it has right. a security warning, right? And so we're going to add this as a plugin to be installed by the plugin installation manager. And the version number that we're going to install is 1.1.1. One one one. Okay. And because we want some plugin that does not have a a security warning. We're going to choose another plugin. I happen to know that one's version number by heart. Wow. Okay, so we've got one that has a security warning and one that does not. Now what we need to do is we need to download. Oh, that won't help. I need to download this thing. And then we're going to run it and see what it does. Okay, so, and let's make the file name shorter. Okay, Java minus jar, CLI dot jar, and it should give us a help message. 
which it does. Okay, so Java minus jar, cli.jar, and we need, let's actually, let's check its version just to be sure we got something that is, yes, this is a non-released version. So let's now pass the right arguments like, what Jenkins version do we want? And I want to use 2.375.3. And what plugins file do I want to use? Plugins.txt. And now where do I want to write the file, I want to write the contents to, oh, here, let's clean the, the, the download directory so that we can reuse this thing. Okay, now, sorry, Fram, testing is, testing is complicated, isn't it? All right. I do know that. <laughs> we, we see this one has hide security warnings and has no listing for show. Files. So that's yeah. good. Yes. And default. it's also specified that the default is false by uh, which is sort of sort of silly, right? Because this is not yeah. one that takes a value, <laughs> but okay. That's that's correct. The default is it's not set. Hmm. Then clean D and now. Login file we've done and oh we need to say what directory we're using and the directory we're using plugin download directory is plugins okay here we go okay there's the security warning okay now I want to be sure that that thing did not go to standard standard out. So I'm going to redirect standard error to X. And in the file X, there's the security warnings. Perfect. Good. All right. Now, if we look in the plugins directory, we have the Git client plugin and a bunch of its dependencies and the Cisco Spark notifier. Okay, so that behaved the way I expected. Now the next thing was a test to see what if we hide the security warnings? Does it in fact hide them? And so hide security warnings. It did. it did. So as far as I can tell, this is well behaved. It's doing what we wanted it to do. Oh, oh, one more check. One more check. Compatibility Mid check. Oh, okay. Go ahead. What was that? Uh, I was just saying uh, we'll also just uh, have a look at how, how this interacts with Git plugin. How it interacts with the Git plugin. Tell me what you mean by that. So um, Git does not exactly have any warnings, right? So we just make sure that it also follows that. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is let's edit plugins.txt, remove Cisco Spark notifier, and try again. And just try it out with Git, right? Right. Okay. Good. Okay. And when I said view security warnings, it gave me an empty output for security warnings. Now, if I take that away, it, hmm. it says, okay, no security warnings. Report. Now that's interesting. That's, that's the way, hmm. I wonder if that's what we want. Okay, so do you see what happened here? It says right, right. It, on the standard error, it wrote, let's let's double check that it's really standard error. I think on standard error, it wrote the word security warnings. And an empty string, I'm assuming. And nothing else. 
Right. It, I would have thought it would be better if it didn't write anything, if there were no security warnings. Or just like a simple message that no security warnings were found. Right, right. Okay. Meg, did you have a comment? Uh, nope. Okay. Agreed. All right. So now I don't think that that, so I think that Daniel in his initial specification didn't say, hey, we need to, where is his initial description? Where's his shoes? No, pull requests. Okay. When he described this, I don't think Daniel said, Yeah, so so the way I read this, Daniel's saying, hey, there really isn't a reason for it to be disabled, enable it. He doesn't seem to care one way or the other if the, the phrase security warnings is visible or not. What do you recommend, Freyam? Should we accept it as is? Because this this contributor it's now been a month. We would, I would like to get these kind of things in. And I think this is a good one to say, hey, no security warnings. Or do we put the extra effort in and try to find a way to modify this so that if there are no warnings, don't even display the heading? Um, I would say uh, for now this, I mean, I guess we can just sleep on this for now, but I think uh, like the PR solves the issue. So I think uh, we can just go forward with this for now. And okay. uh, if it uh, if it actually comes up again, then we can just have a look at this later on. Great. <clears throat> All right, then I, th I think we go ahead and say that this is ready to merge. Let's see, I do need to label the pull request. So this is a, what would we call it? This is really an enhancement, right? I don't think, I, I wouldn't call it a bug. It's Show security warnings by default for me, is it, everybody okay if we call it an enhancement? Absolutely. Okay. All right, then let's go through and back to, prove. okay, one option. Oh, let's read the, what was the question that I had? No, I don't want to cancel the review. It was, oh, right. One optional question. No, no, no. Let's just get rid of that. Let's not do that at all. Delete. I don't like giving people questions without an action. Basil Crow has taught me that that's a bad thing. We should give them either a specific action or not burden them with the, the thing. Okay, so reviewed in Doc's office hours with Freyam at Freyam and Stackscribe. Tested and saw expected behavior in the general cases. Um, wondered during review if we should suppress the security warnings head heading or warnings text if there are no warnings, right? However, good change whether we do that or not. This is a good change whether we suppress the warnings or not. Fair enough? Yep. Yep. Okay. So approve. I'm going to go ahead and merge it then. Now, let's see. Is this one one that it would help it to be squash merged? It is. Good. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and squash merge it. All right. Thanks, everybody. So, Freyam, did that go okay for you? Any yes, anything? Uh, 
It did. So um, I will just okay. So um, my question, I mean, my rational behind this was that uh, okay. So now I have like a very set number of like steps to follow while reviewing the PRs here. I just want I just want to like have a look at like how this thing works in this organization as a whole. Good. Yeah. Um, very good. You can. So I guess you can now see me reviewing uh, PRs. Yeah. Right. So this one, this incorrect Jenkins war des destination. The five twenty. Right. Is a right 520 is a good good one for you to review in particular because Jagruti, I Jagruti, Jagruti Tiwari, Tiwari, I believe is her name, has submitted this one and it is now actually ready for review. I just haven't been back to it. So if you could help review this one, I'll do that, run tests with it, etc. That's great. Perfect. All right, thanks. Any other topics we should discuss today? No, nope, good meeting. Thanks, Meg. And we'll meet again next week. <laughs> Fram, thank you very much. You are welcome to join. You. you certainly don't need to feel obligated, but we love to sure, use this obligated. time to help the Jenkins project. Yes. <laughs> but this was a great time for me as well. So you can I can expect to me, I mean, you can expect me to be here even the next time. Okay, Great idea. I listen to Mark. I always learn something. All right. We will we will talk to each other in a week then. Thank you. Thank you.